while um, the importance of incentivization remains consistent, obviously the partner ecosystem is always evolving, right? And so the way that we incentivize partners has to evolve in line with that. And given that we're in a new year, um, we're all coming off our, our planning sessions, we starting to communicate to our partners. I thought it'd be good to kick off the panel and hear from all of you. Um, so I think we will start with you, Ali, um, and then on to Laura and then on to Kenneth. Um, and the question is really looking ahead to 2024 um, and potentially beyond, what are some of the key trends or market dynamics that you see having an impact or shaping the way you as a vendor would, would think about incentivizing your partners? Um, so Ali, over to you. Sure, yeah, thanks, Margaret. So I would say from my perspective, there are two, two trends that I see really coming to the forefront. The first of those, and I think you kind of alluded to this, Margaret, is the evolving partner business models. We have, you know, this increasing idea of these hybrid partners, they do more than just resell, they do more than just services, and they kind of are creating this unique new ecosystem of partners that have different needs and different ways that they're making money, which also means, from my perspective, that we need to think of different ways to incentivize them. Um, at Barracuda, we just recently launched a refresh version of our partner program, and it's been redesigned around kind of this customer success framework of layer, where there are all of these different steps in a journey of, you know, kind of guiding a customer along their entire eco or entire life cycle. So in our in our uh, perspective on incentives, it also means kind of focusing on how do we incentivize them across all of those different stages of the life cycle, not just deal registration or not just closing the business, but also retaining that renewal or cross selling or adopting other solutions or services. Um, so I would say that's kind of key trend for me, number one, is this idea of evolving partner business models. And then the second one that we've been seeing, especially as a SaaS company, is longer sales cycles. And I'm sure a lot of you in the audience today can attest to that as well. And there are more and more stakeholders that are involved in making a decision. So um, another key priority for us is also making sure that our incentives are matched to kind of the required efforts of those longer sales cycles if we're incentivizing at the company level or if we're incentivizing at the individual rep level. So I would say those two are kind of the, the key trends I'm seeing on my end. Very, very interesting. Okay, um, Laura? Yeah, so for us, uh, we have a, a quite um, diverse portfolio. And so for us, we're looking at really in a, um, even the distributor and or reseller side of it is that what are the capabilities? What are the specializations required? So matching the incentives based on to the type of capabilities so that they can really focus in and grow that market space. We also are looking at gamification where we're looking at incenting some of the resellers based on sales out and it, from a company profile as well as the individual reseller because as we know resellers are motivated by you know earnings and their margin dollars and so trying to give some of that back but really looking at how do we grow the overall it's kind of like what was already said about making sure that we're getting the service attached, the renewals, making sure that uh, we're selling more for more and making it um, an enticing offer for the resellers and distributors to be able to look inside the base that they already have and expand that out. And how do we get more from those actual accounts where we're looking at whether it's SMB space or um, growth on a particular product portfolio? So those are the, you know, what we're really looking at when we're looking at the different kinds of uh, market dynamics and, and thinking about how we're going to incent uh, partners. Mm, I'm hearing more for more also profitability play, right? Which I think is yeah. pretty critical to partners at the moment. So, mm -hmm. um, um, okay, and Kenneth. Yeah, no, thanks, Margaret. Yeah, and um, yeah, probably some of the same as, as Bo Daly and, and uh, Laura would have alluded to there, but I suppose, you know, looking at the year ahead, how, how vendors will incentivize their channel, it, it, it really depends on the vendors, you know, varies by product, by vertical, by partner type, and indeed the partner maturity, you know, how you incentivize your, your really large partners versus new ones coming on, etc. But I suppose at this time of year, you know, most vendors have settled on their, their strategy and goal, and then it's really thinking about how do you incentivize the channel to achieve 
the targets associated with the company goals. And, and I touched on this already, but I suppose some of the key steps that people need to think about is, you know, to ensure as you develop your incentives, you need to align those with, you know, whatever those goals that are that are set down from from the top, and make sure then where in company cases where you have both direct and indirect business that you know, the, the indirect business does align with the overall company goals. Um, we'll be digging into the incentive types a lot more as we get into the, the webinar, but, um, you know, the key programs that, that we still see trending are the rebates to the partner companies, the SPIFs to the uh, to the individuals. They really remain the core pillars of, of most vendors' incentivization strategy. Um, it's around... Um, you know what what things you're incenting then so um we see you know cash is still king um and while other options exist around points and rewards we still very much um, see cash as as what partners and indeed individuals at, at partners appreciate most and it's by far and away the most used mechanism um still that we see in the channel and then in terms of trends for the year ahead um that we see vendors you know continuing to incentivize so things like continuing to see the migration to cloud offerings, the, the recurring revenue. Um, I think both Ali and, and <coughs> excuse me, Laura touched on this already, but there's a lot of hunkering down because of a, a tougher economy in tech over the last year. Um, people are putting a lot of incentivization into the whole uh, renewals and expansion within existing customer base and incentivizing their channel partners to do just that. Obviously paying for net new logos is, is very significant paying for training with the new products, with expansion across partners into uh, other verticals within their product set for the larger vendors. And another couple of areas I'll call out is around deal reg and pipeline. So trying to drum up that pipeline through incentivization. So, you know, spiffing on everything from deal reg to closing deal reg. And another one that, you know, is really a lot of focus on has been around what they call partner source business. So often vendors give partners leads but they're paying partners particularly more and incentivizing them to bring partner source business to the table. And then lastly, I would say around the partner type, so adding MSPs to your program, paying different types of um, incentives to refer and, and influence business. Um, so yeah, they, they would be kind of some of the trends we, we see, Margaret. Great. So um, there's a lot to unpack there. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, you know, if I, if I think through what everyone's spoken about, it's around evolving business models, making sure that you're incenting for the activity and the effort that that partner is doing and recognizing that they may be performing different roles. Um, there's acknowledgement sales cycles are longer, stakeholders are more complex. Um, getting those deals and closing those deals is, is how do you shorten that time to closure? I think that makes a lot of sense. And then, um, yeah, looking at, you know, the, the value add, I guess, service attached, renewals. Um, yeah, a ton of stuff to unpack there. And I think we'll go into quite a lot more detail, but thank you. That was, that was really, really helpful. So I think